Okay, welcome to Stampscaping 101. This is uh, video three, and I want to kind of start off this video kind of where I ended the last one in terms of using uh, the sky imagery. Um, in video one and two, I was talking about the overlapping aspect of the blending of the imagery together to create seamless scenes. Now, going into the sky elements, and I talked a little bit about this, uh, this cloud stamp right here. But here's some other different types of images. Um, stars, Milky Ways, different types of moons. Uh, we have different suns in the line. But these ones right here I chose because out of all the sky imagery that we have, this one like right here with the Milky Way large stamp, these ones have the potential of being kind of the most rectangular and kind of brick-like in appearance when you um, make your impressions with that, and especially if you repeat the uh, imagery over the uh, entire area of a card, all right? But now, just like this cloud stamp right here, I'll show you how to blend this image in with itself, and I'll show you how to blend this image in with the uh, with some other imagery, like this cloud stamp right here. I'll use these two in conjunction with one another. Okay. Inking up. Again, good. Even coverage. And again, this is uh, dye-based inks and glossy cardstock. Um, let's say I'm stamping this Milky Way stamp about like so. All right. I gave it good center pressuring. I didn't take the stamp and rock it back and forth, thus creating a much stronger perimeter border around that. Okay, now when I stamp this again, I'm going to line these up roughly, but then I'm going to overlap and change the angle slightly from one impression to the next. Now, if I just stamp this again with the, that same inking, it'll give me a much lighter impression. So I'm going to re-ink this. And this blue right here is a dark blue. It's called number three blue from Uchida. Okay, now I've changed the angle and I've moved it over slightly, thus getting rid of this idea of kind of a stacking of bricks type of effect. And I've actually lined up that kind of that little S-like um, area in there that's a little bit lighter just to kind of continue that down. And we have these areas out here, but you can kind of see where I've done that. I've overlapped into that previous impression and you really can't see this perimeter uh, line Going back in it again, we have these areas to fill in. Then uh, now, that's naturally if I'm going to do this whole um, card as just the sky alone. But I'll show you also how to do it with other imagery. Okay, so overlapping, changing the angle. And again, I'm not overlapping five inches into the previous impression. But a good, I don't know, maybe about a half inch, three quarter inch even. And then when we look at this, hopefully we can't see any lines in between the imagery. All right. Now let's go and let's use these two stamps together. One's a little bit airier and open where these billowing clouds are. And this one's more of a solid shape. Okay. Let's see, I'm going to stamp this somewhere like that. Okay, now you saw how I filled in some additional areas around here. But let's go and use this cloud stamp right here. Now I'm going to stamp this cloud, preferably in at least as dark a color or darker color than this background out here. If I stamp it in a super light blue and stamp it down there, this impression is going to be really light, and then this dark line might show right through the center of this. So I'm going to use the same blue pad, and I'm going to overlap into this um, Milky Way right here. Re-ink, change the angle a little bit. And 
and I'm going to just work my way down. And here's an example, a little bit of a different take on the Milky Way. We have some clouds right here, and just straight Milky Way up here. Okay, now let's move into some of these other images. That's the Milky Way stamp. Some of these stamps are fairly large, especially in relation to a quarter page piece of paper. This fills up, you know, the vast majority from side to side, especially if we're going on a vertical, all right? But let's say we're stamping out one of the smaller sky images. This one is cloud with moon. Okay, and let's say we stamp it out about like so. We're gonna have all this area to fill in around it. One of the perfect filler images is also the same cloud stamp right here, and you can see where I've overlapped. Changing the angle. Now right here, the only thing I have to watch out for is I don't want to take this stamp and make an impression right across the middle of that moon. I don't want a bunch of clouds in there. So I'm just being careful to overlap enough of the cloud formation around it, but not go into the moon. And there's plenty of space to work with. We're talking about an inch before we get into that moon right there, so it's not like you have to do a lot of careful masking or anything like that. In this case, I'm not using any masking at all. Okay, okay now, I could just leave this open up here and have just open sky and fill it up with just some blue tones. I can stack this cloud up just like that, or kind of on an image like this that I showed in, I think it was the second video, I've actually twirled the stamp around, not twirling like that in the application, but from one impression to the next, I've spun it around and I can do the same thing like that here. You can kind of see that the light is coming from above these clouds and that's what's illuminating them. So let's say that this is the illuminating source of light in this scene right here. So if I stamped it up this way, the light would be coming from above. So what I'm doing is I'm turning this around so that it looks like the light is shining from the clouds underneath. Okay. And we have this area filled in. So we don't see the edges of the cloud with moon anymore. We filled in around here with some additional clouds. And we can do the same thing, for, you know, the same approach would be done on something like this with the star birth. On this one right here, it's called glowing orb, which is a much smaller moon, kind of different cloud formations in there. You don't always have to use like a cumulus cloud around it, but that's just one example of how to fill in. We can do kind of streaks of color to blend this stamp in with its surrounding area. All right, now let's just use this in application. I stamped out a lot of images with the... Um, Lakeside Cove Large last time. Let's do an example of stamping out these sky images in a scene. Okay, now there's nothing to say that this can't be, you know, a complete scene in itself. It's just a sky scene. But let's use some of these images with um, something a little bit more land-based, terrestrial that Lakeside Cove, okay? What I'm gonna do is hopefully create kind of a, a reflection in the water, a moon, some clouds around it, and it's reflection down here. Now what I've done is I've just taken this, and I, I'm not bothering to do a mirror impression stamp or something like that. I've stamped it there, and I've stamped it out here again, roughly trying to line up those two orbs right there. Same color ink with the cloud cumulus and I just have this area to fill in around it two areas to fill in the moon and its reflection or is this the moon and its reflection we'll decide that when we're stamping out the uh, the lakeside uh, cove Okay. 
there's the background right there. Now, I could have stamped out this lakeside cove first and stamped the moons right above it and below it. This lakeside cove here is a fairly solid image, so it doesn't matter if I stamp this first or last. Now, I'm going in with this cove here and I'm stamping it in black. You have to stamp it in something as dark or darker than the background. Otherwise, when you stamp this out, if I did this in a light gray, those dark blue shapes will probably be showing right through all the solid imagery. Okay, so what's up and what's down? Let's see. I think that looks good to me. And I'm going to just roughly aim to get this somewhere in the center there. You know, it's not going to matter to me if it's a centimeter off or something like that. Good center pressuring right there. Get a good solid crisp impression like that. And you have this uh, lakeside cove in here. And I can add some other foreground types of imagery in here if I want to. Something like the reeds or whatnot. But anyways, this is just an example. And again, I would add some additional tones in here. Maybe I'll do that in a future video. And I'll add some shadows down here just to anchor that scene into the scene a little bit more. But again, this is kind of the foundation for a uh, land scene, but it's really kind of focusing more around the lighting of the scene, which is going to be created by the moon and its reflection. Okay, thanks again for watching.